Hi everybody! I recorded this video after a few experiments with color changes using a shader on a sprite. Let's take a look at the options we have available. Ok, so as usual I'm working in Godot engine. However, the shader we create in this video should be usable almost everywhere. It's nothing out of the ordinary, we're solving everything using vector and matrix operations. So I'll start by creating a new 2D scene into which I'll insert an image as a sprite 2D. Let me do it here, right click, create new scene and I'll call it for example colors. Ah, oh, it exists. Ok, color. No problem. And OK. And this time I chose a screenshot from our upcoming game because it seemed more suitable for this purpose. Let me drag it over there. OK, maybe it's too big, but we can change the dimensions of the scene later. And uh, I'll change its position to 0, 0. Uh, OK, and disable centered so we can nicely see it right here. OK, I mentioned the shader, but first let's show how we can modify colors directly in the inspector. In the canvas item section right here, if we expand visibility, we can see properties modulate and self modulate. The difference between them is that self-modulate changes colors only for the selected node, while uh, modulate does the same for all child nodes of this node. Of course, we don't have any child nodes of this sprite node, so both, um, both options would be the same for us. Let me click modulate, for example, and do some changes. Yeah, I'm just getting rid of the red, uh, red component. So we can see how the image turns bluish green. Similarly, we would create other shades. Actually, Godot makes it easier for us by showing the resulting color directly in the slider. So for example, I can make it nicely purple like this and so on. Let's get back to the original, uh, original state. OK, uh, we can achieve the same effect programmatically in the GD script. In our game, for example, we change the alpha channel this way to highlight certain parts of the screen during an active dialogue with an NPC, while the rest fade into the background. We can quickly, uh, quickly create a simple script to set the modulate property in the process function. So let me do it right here. I'll create a new script and quickly do this change. So what we need is a reference to our sprite node. We do it right here and now in the process function, let's just to use it screen uh, 04 modulate and let's make it with, uh, let's say, green color, green filter, 0, 1, 0 and try it out. Yeah, everything is green, it seems like it works as expected. Great. All right, so what will the shader do for us? It will give us much greater control over the modification of color components and we can easily use well-known matrices to change brightness, contrast or saturation. Let's get started. So I'll click back to 2D scene and select, yeah, select it, uh, the sprite is selected. What we need now is to add a new material it will be shader material, of course. Click it and add a new shader. Let's call it color GD shader canvas item. Perfect. Okay, seems something like that exists there. So we'll put it to the shaders, shaders folder and create. Great. And click. Okay, here it is. Let's expand a little bit. Very well. <coughs> so. Uh, we will delete what we don't need, leaving only the fragment function. Let me quickly do that. One and two. Very well. I mentioned that we will be adjusting brightness, contrast and saturation. 
So we will create uniform parameters for these three values. Let's do it. Uniform float brightness with a hint range. Uh, we'll do it from negative one to one and we start with the default value zero. Actually, I will explain this later. Let me just quickly do that so we don't waste time and make it twice more for contrast and saturation. But for contrast, we would have another uh, range. Let's make it from negative 10 to 10 and the default value is one. And let's do the same for saturation, negative 10 to 10. And one more thing, let's make a smaller step, 0.01. Okay, we're ready. Uh, as I said, I won't go into why the intervals are set this way just yet. We'll get to that later. For now, it's important to know that brightness is zero contrast 1 and saturation 1 correspond to the original image without any changes. In the fragment function, we need to retrieve the color of the current pixel of the texture uh, the shader is applied to. We'll do it like this. So first, uh, vector 4 color would be taken from the texture function and uh, current texture and current UV coordinates and of course we need to assign that to the internal color value that's all so it's time to implement and use matrices first we will define them and then we'll show what we'll do with them for all operations we'll use 4x4 matrices which are defined in the Godot shading language using four four dimensions vectors let me start with the brightness matrix. Okay, I'll do it here. So mat4 brightness matrix with the value of brightness, let's call it B. So the matrix would be nicely aligned and we need to return a matrix four by four, uh, four, sorry, with these components um, that would be VEC4, 1, 0, 0, 0, yeah, okay, now the second matrix is VEC4, 0, 1, 0, 0, the third, third one, uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, and finally, like for b b b one okay and of course we need to add a semicolon to make it valid very well this is the this is the well-known matrix for adjusting brightness i'm just showing it uh, with a screenshot taken from wikipedia or, or some other page and yeah, the brightness matrix is a simple translation matrix on the RGB components. The fourth value uh, is the alpha channel that isn't affected. That's why it's one and zero over there. Using such a matrix is simple. In the fragment function, we can retrieve its value, which will then multiply by the color of the current pixel, this vector. Since we have a 4x4 matrix and our color is vector 4, multiplying a matrix and a vector isn't an issue and Godot shading language will handle this for us this way. So we can simply do this. Matrix 4, uh, let's call it matrix, would be brightness matrix applied on the brightness value this one from the uniform parameters and finally matrix would be multiplied by the color okay uh, now um, it is uh, yeah 
Let's try to change the uh, brightness value in the inspector. Let's expand shader parameters and work with that. Yeah, one, two. Looks like it's working perfectly. We can see that for one, everything is white, and for negative one, everything is black. That's also why we chose the interval exactly like this. Now, in the same way, we'll add the option to change contrast and saturation. But before we do that, there's one important note. Make sure not to swap the order of this multiplication. Uh, let's see what happens if we do that. So instead of matrix by color, we will use color by matrix. And now nothing is happening and something very odd is happening right here. Let me put it back. Yeah, seems to be working again. Great. Okay, so we got a completely different result. It can be confusing because when multiplying ordinary numbers, the order doesn't matter. But when it comes to vectors and matrices, the operation isn't commutative and the order does indeed matter. Okay, now the contrast matrix, I will implement it right here. So again, mat4, contrast matrix with the parameter C for contrast. And this time it will be a bit more complex. We need to define another variable first. I will explain that later. So float T would be one, sorry, one minus contrast and divided by two. And now the matrix mat4, uh, no, 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 return mat4. Okay, I think it would be easier just to copy that and change the values. All right. And now we need C000. Yeah, there is no B, of course. Uh, 0C00, 000C, 000C, and TTT1. Very well. The contrast matrix is a scaling matrix on the RGB elements. This extra parameter, we'll call it a translation parameter, is used for shifting the base color when the C is equal to zero from black to gray. And finally, uh, the saturation matrix. This one is a bit more complicated because we'll, we are working with what's called a luminance vector which adjusts the calculation to the human eye, which perceives different shades with different sensitivity. We'll use such a luminance vector, which uh, whose values yield the best result in the RGB linear space. Let me do that. <coughs> Mat4 saturation matrix with the value S. And first, as I said, we need to define the luminance vector. Luminance is vector four. And I will use these coefficients, which are taken from some page about this topic in the uh, zero, zero, 008 to zero. Very well. Eh. Sorry. Here. And now we need to define variables we will need in our final matrix so we don't just uh, repeat the code. One. This is just a well known uh, formula for calculating the saturation, so I won't. I won't explain every single line. I will just refer to the page it was taken from, probably in the description of this video. So as blue and as 
green and luminance factor green component and blue component okay we are ready and now the matrix itself I will just copy that this structure and fix it so what we need here is SR plus S and SR and SR and zero here that would be S G no as a G plus S as a G and zero and finally S B as B as B plus S and zero and here we have uh, zero 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 one okay great so all matrices are ready we can add them to our calculation again simple multiplication will suffice because a 4x4 four four matrix times a 4x4 four four matrix gives us another 4x4 four four matrix as a result so we can easily adjust our calculation in the fragment function and let me do that this way better format it multiplied by contrast matrix with the parameter contrast and finally saturation matrix saturation like this cool i think we're finished so now we can play with the sliders in the inspector so i'll expand the sprite we can see everything okay and now for instance if we want the image in grayscale we can set saturation to zero here we go or another example if we want inverted colors we can simply set the contrast to negative one yeah now of course this is the uh, color inversion of all colors in this in this image and I believe you'll discover more combinations that yield very interesting results again I'll spend some time on my own experiments and share the best combinations on my patreon account for instance changing the contrast can give very very interesting results along with saturation and moving the brightness down up you can do basically anything with that and yeah something like that and that's all for now we could have also played with what's called the hue rotation which would give us another way to modify the color palette of the image but we'll save that for one of the future tutorials for now Take care and see you in the next video.